So now I'm going to talk about a few case studies which are generated by working along with our customers. The first one which I'm going to talk about is the lever group. This particular component is an air spring carrier for a trailer arm. The trailer has four, three axles with two air spring carriers per axle for a total of six components per the entire system. Lever used inspired to reduce the mass from over 8 kilograms to around 4 kilograms on the air spring carrier, which translated to a roughly of 25 kilogram mass reduction across the entire assembly. We also have documented the workflow, what they adopted. So initially, they created a package space around the existing component. So this is the first step in optimization. You create a design space. The larger the design space, you get an optimum design. So they got rid of the features and created a larger package space in Inspire, so which can be you know seen on the screen. So the maroon region is the design space, and the gray regions are all the non-design spaces. So design space is the region from where Inspire carves away the material, and non-design spaces are regions where we don't want inspire to do remove any material so once the design space is created we can create fasteners like screws and bolts over here is creating screws wherein he is attaching this part to the main assembly further he is applying supports he is also creating forces so we can also find different contacts which Inspire is creating in the background. So once the contacts are created, you can run iterations and Inspire generates concepts within minutes. The first concept which we generated looks more organic in nature. The reason being we have not applied any manufacturing constraints on this part. So we are getting an organic shape. So further, he is applying manufacturing constraints like symmetry and split draw. Once we have applied the draw constraints, you can see you are getting a result which is more manufacturable. So once you get a design which is more manufacturable, you can further perform analysis on that design and validate the concept. Inspire finds the stresses and displacements on the concept generated. And once you feel that Inspire is meeting all the performance requirements, you can further create a CAD on top of this concept, which can be taken back to the CAD and you, know, you can create a new part around it. So this is the new design which they came up with. So Inspire basically provides a result which you can use as a skeleton and design your new component. So over here, this was their previous design and this was the new design which was lighter by around 55%. You can see the existing design over here which was you know, not having any slots but in the new design which they came up, you know, they ended up creating three lightning holes, which you know, reduced the mass by around 55%. So the next work which I'm going to talk about is up from Hardmark. Hardmark is a digital design and manufacturing studio focused on future factories, that is additive manufacturing. They have additive manufacturing uh, they, mainly, they focus on just-in-time production and delivery of custom-made parts ordered through internet. They were able to come up with a design which was very organic in shape, which they 3D printed using titanium material. They were able to save a mass of around 32%, retaining all the stiffness requirements. So the next work which I'm going to talk about is key safety systems. They are a large automotive safety supplier. Their application 
of Inspire on the on their seatbelt lever retractor was important as it helped them speed up their product development time. They were able to reduce the peak displacements by around 50%, which was quite significant. The next work which is which I'm going to talk about is from Scania. They are a large truck manufacturer. They redesigned their steering arm using Inspire. They were able to reduce the mass done by 30% and they were able to, you know, increase the development time by 3x times. This is the work which is done by American Axel. You know, American Axel thought to use Inspire to help generate the lightest possible design that would still meet their strength targets. So they were able to reduce around 20% of mass, which was quite significant. The components were optimized for bending and deflection performance as well. So this is the work done by Evenflow. Evenflow is a leading manufacturer of Geminal safety products, including infant car seats. They used Inspire to create a more efficient design structure on a car seat component. The next work which I'm talking about is from Polaris. It's a very interesting work. Polaris had strict weight reduction goals, all without compromising any structural integrity. They used aluminum instead of steel, and the results generated in Inspire translated to a weight reduction of around 35 to 40 percent. So you can see over here the concepts which were generated using Inspire. So the next work which I am presenting is from, you know, Renusha. This is a great example of using concept generation to create the ideal shape for a given load case being partnered with additive manufacturing. Renusha and Empire Cycles in UK designed and manufactured the world's first 3D printed bike frame. The shape, the shape of the seat post in this case was generated using Inspire. So this is the concept what they generated and they 3D printed this component which is fitted over here. This work is done by EADS where they used Inspire for concept generation on their bracket which they manufactured using ALM. They were able to reduce the mass by around 64% which was quite significant. The next work is done by Ruark. They basically, you know, redesigned the antenna bracket of a central satellite. So this part fits at this location over here. So this was the first 3D printed, you know, bracket which went into the satellite. They were able to reduce the mass by around 43%. Also, they were able to increase the frequency targets from 70 hertz to 90 hertz, which improved the static behavior, strength, stiffness, and stability. Yeah, the next work, this is you know a very interesting work done by 3D Systems, which basically they designed a skateboard. 3D Systems designed a structurally efficient skateboard which they 3D printed. The goal here was to improve upon the product that has been fairly unchanged for many years. The team at 3D Systems wanted to see how they could change the way the skateboards are designed and produced. So now I'm going to walk through a live demo on a component. So this is a bike frame assembly wherein we are interested in optimizing this component. So I will open an Inspire session now. So this is how an Inspire session looks like. It's, it, it's a very cool to 
user interface. Let's say if you want to import any file into Inspire, you can just drag and drop the file and Inspire opens the file. So this is the assembly which I'm trying to optimize wherein I'm interested in optimizing this component. So I'm going to just pull that component into the assembly over here. So in this session, I have only this part. So this is an existing design of the component which I want to optimize. So once you pull any component into Inspire, Inspire finds if there are any missing surfaces. You can easily go and patch them using the patch tool. Over here it says there is one surface which is missing. I can quickly patch it. So when you are working on optimization, there are no, you know, two scenarios. The scenario, in the first case, you don't have any existing design wherein you are starting from the scratch. And in scenario two, you have an existing design and you want to improve the performance of the existing design or you want to lighten the weight. So we are, you know, assuming the second scenario here, we have the existing design and we want to come up with something which is lighter than that. So the first step in optimization in Inspire is to create a design space. So if you look at this existing design, it has a lot of slots over here, which we would like to fill in. So you can do that using the Simplify tool within Inspire, which is very easy to use. You can just go there and click on the holes, and it finds all the different holes on this model. You can just select on the holes, and the holes are packed with material. So it's basically closing all these holes. Now, like we have a larger design space, and it's very easy to set design space in Inspire. You select a part, do a right click on it, and check the design space on. So now we have created a design space onto the model. The next thing what we are supposed to understand here is how to set up materials. So if you want to set up any materials, you go and click on the materials tab. Inspire has standard material library wherein you find steel, aluminum, titanium, and some plastic materials. Let's say if you want to create your own material, you click on the my materials tab, and if you click on the plus icon, you can basically create your own materials and put in the values. So once you create any material over here, that comes up into this materials library table, and you can go to the parts and assign specific material what you want. Over here, I'll be assigning steel material on this assembly. So by default, Inspire assigns steel material, and if you want to change it, you can do that by going over here. So once the design space is created, the next step is applying loads and supports. So to do that, I go to this loads utility. Over here, I have my supports. I have forces. I have pressure. So first, I want to create support. So I select the support over here. And I want to hold this part at this location. So I can select over here. So if I want to basically review the degrees of freedom, I can just double click on it. it. It shows all the degrees of freedom. If it is gray, it means it's locked, and if it is green, it means it is free to move. So over here, I want it to be locked in all the three directions, so I'm just leaving it gray. I also want to apply support on this hole. I can just select that. That creates a hole. If I want to leave it to rotate, I can just release it. So once I'm done with creating supports, I can apply my forces. To do that, I go to this force utility, select this utility. I can apply force on a surface or on a point or on a line. Over here, I want to apply it on this cylindrical surface. So when I'm holding my mouse on that region, it shows what it is selecting. Currently, it is 
selecting the cylindrical surface. So I select. I can type in a value of some 810 Newton and I need to hit enter. I want to apply that in Y direction so I select the Y axis. I'm going to do this on the same on the other hole as well. So once the forces are created, I can zoom out and see the orientation of the force. And once I'm done with my supports, the next stuff which I want to do is click on optimize. And Inspire comes up with this dialog box wherein you can run optimization for two objectives. One is maximize stiffness, the other is minimize mass. Maximize stiffness is a stiffness-based design and moreover minimize mass is a stress-based design. So over here I would like to run an iteration with maximize stiffness. So I want to run it with the retention of 30% of mass of the design space. Basically I want Inspire to remove 70% of the mass from the design space. So over here, I can do minimum thickness constraints. For this part, I'll be using it as 8 mm. So once I'm done setting this up, all I just need to do is hit run. And once I hit run, Inspire is going to run this in the background and come up with a concept. So I've already run this model. It takes around eight, 7 to 8 minutes to run. So I already have the results with me. So I'm just going to pull that result. So over here, I have the results from Inspire, wherein we have retained 30% of the mass. Now, Inspire comes up with the Shape Explorer, which shows how the load path is following. You can use the Shape Explorer and find how the rips are growing. You need to keep this at a point wherein all the rips are generated. So if you look at this result, it's very organic in nature. The reason being we didn't apply any manufacturing constraints on the concept. So in order to apply manufacturing constraints, what I can further start doing is I can go back. I can just go to structure shape controls. We have three shape controls. One is single draw, split draw, and extrusion. For this component, I would like to use extrusion constraint. So I select the extrusion constraint and select the design space. It asks me along which axis do we need to extrude. I can select any axis. Over here, I'll be selecting the Z axis. So once I do this, and again, if I run this iteration, I'll be getting a result which I already have over here. So this result is generated using extrusion shape control. You can notice that it has, you know, the part is uniformly extruded along the z-axis. So the best part with Inspire is once you have a concept and if you feel that concept looks good enough, you can hit analyze on it and Inspire analyzes that concept. In this model, I already have the results which I can view by clicking on this contour. So here I have the results for the extrusion based, you know, analysis on extrusion. So if I click on, by default it shows the factor of safety. If I click on the animation, it shows how the part is animating. So we have two loads in this model. So by default it plots the factor of safety wherein Regions close to factor of safety 1 are shown in red color and regions in blue are, you know, the regions which are having higher factor of safety. In this component, we notice that the factor of safety is above 3 for one load case and for the other load case, it should be around 5. So, all that the designer needs to see is if there are any regions in red color, he just has to, you know, work on stiffening those regions. So once you have analyzed the concept, the next thing what you can do is, 
So I have this result and if I hit fit, Inspire wraps surfaces around this component and it comes up with a smooth surface like something of this type. So once you hit fit, you get a surface on the model. This surfaces can be saved in the form of parasolid file. You can go and save this file as parasolid and it can be taken back into any cat package. The designer can keep this as skeleton and start coming up with a new design. So over here we are capturing the process flow which I demonstrated. He's creating a package space. I'm just going to go through this quickly. So they applied manufacturing constraints. This was the extrusion concept what they generated. The performed analysis and this was the final design which you know they ended up fixing on the original component so the new design was around 25 percent lighter achieving the same performance as the existing so these are the few awards which we have received. Yeah. And you know, thanks for attending the session. I'm done with the presentation and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to. how to do it in Inspire. Uh, you can get some ideas how to do that. Um, so let's see if there's any questions. Okay, so the first question is, is there a specific uh, you know, system configuration for running Inspire. And, and the good thing about Inspire, it's one of the tools you will be able to get with the free download of our uh, you know, student edition. And it, it can run on pretty much any laptop or workstation. Uh, it's, you know, again, it can, you know, so you shouldn't need to worry too much about that standard laptop should be fine. If you do need uh, more, uh, you know, if you're going to be running really large parts, um, or multiple systems, you probably want to put it on a little bit larger workstation, but uh, for instance, the problem you saw here uh, with the bike frame was done on uh, this laptop and just you know took what I think it's about seven, seven, eight yeah, seven to eight minutes and um, this is a three-year-old laptop uh, that he's on, so it's uh, again, good laptop but not, not the latest and greatest. So, uh, and, and the goal with um, what we've seen with all our tools, uh, uh, Pre and post processing solvers, you know, you should be able to run um, most single parts and components uh, without any problem. And uh, another great question here: uh, the, Are there any limitations uh, with the software? Now, the free version uh, does have a limitation of 10,000 nodes if you're doing uh, FEA analysis. Uh, you're taking, going to a hypermesh and then uh, maybe solving, let's say, in uh, you know, our linear solver. But if you use Inspire, there's no limitation. Uh, we, we try to keep that one open uh, for, you know, with conceptual design. We understand that it's sometimes harder to put limitations. And that's with the current version 13.0. Uh, version 14.0 is about to come out in a month's plus time. Uh, we're hoping by the end of February. And that version um, will have a much higher limitation. It's currently, uh, we're going to have it at 50,000 nodes. 
which will allow you to run a lot bigger models. <laughs> um, so, but right now the 10,000, what we've seen in whether it's our tutorials or more uh, FE analysis, uh, that it's not a problem at all. So, uh, so great question. Next question has can you um, export to Parasolids? And I, we can also export to IGS and step files. Uh, you know, so Parasolids is typically the best one we've seen, uh, but it all depends on again the tool that you want to take it into. Uh, you can try it out that way. One of the actually, uh, since we do have a little bit of time, just uh, hit me for a shot is um, one of the things coming out in the next version of Inspired is the nerve, you know, nervification, and that you know this kind of relates to this question here. So I'm going to hand the uh, speaking back over to Prashant, and he can show that. I think that's pretty exciting. I hate to show something that's coming in the future, but you know, uh, one thing we do find that people who are using Inspired in the EDU communities are using this for your uh, for their senior design projects and things like that. And so this is something that can be utilized for that too. So I'm going to give back the mic to Prashant. Thanks, Darius. You know, I'll just brief them through the Nervify utility which we have in 2016. So I have opened Inspire 2016, which is yet to be released. So with Inspire 2016, we have a very good functionality, which is, you know, wherein you can run polynerves. Let's say you have a result which you got from optimization. So I have a result out here. So you can create NURBS on this design. So I have three results. So I, I just want to create NURBS on one of this result. So we have a utility called as PolyNURBS. Over there we have something called as Wrap. So you can select Wrap and the best part is you can select the section and it starts creating surfaces on top of the section. So you can easily create geometries over here. So you can see it's so easy to do this. So I can start creating this part on the stress like structure. So once I'm done with this, I can basically bridge between these nerves. I can use the bridge utility and connect these two solids. I can even sharpen this nerves so that you know I am able to attach this quite well. I am trying to bridge this two locations. You can also try to sharpen this and further bridge between these two. So it's very easy to use and it creates a very clean CAD. So I can start wrapping it from here to here. So now I have a clean CAD which is created on this concept which was generated using Inspire. So this CAD looks much better than what we used to generate using the fit option. So the best part is you can run analysis on this design and if you see that there are hot spots you already have the nerves in the background. You can just thicken the component or you know make it thinner wherever you want. This is very you know 
easy to use. So if you want to basically change the section, you can try modifying it the way you want. So this is a very good functionality which is available with the latest, which is Inspire 2016. I'll just pass on the controls to Darius. Great. Thank you, Prashant. And, and the key thing there to show was um, it is really simple to use. And, and just in general, um, Inspire is a really easy to use interface. And, and uh, we've had many students just pick it up without any uh, real training. Uh, at this point, they can you know use the two tours we have online. And now on that note, what I want to do, if there's not any other questions specifically about the product, okay, uh, let's okay. The question did come in, so great. Uh, so other than exporting, is it possible to make models from scratch like we make in the case of any other, uh, uh, you know, Katia? And the answer is yes. Uh, we didn't go into that, um, but what you can do, and again, there's tutorials on this. Is you see, there's poor. Um, areas where there's points, lines, circles, uh, you can use uh, those uh, functionalities to uh, bring up a grid, as you can see here, and just start sketching out what you want very easily, start putting holes in, uh, thickening it, uh, as you can see. So this live for Shantz is showing uh, what can be done with that. So you can uh, start make, uh, you know, start with that and, and making what you want. But we do find out that a lot of times that people have existing, uh, you know, CAD data and they want to go from there. But it's really key, and I don't want to uh, understress it, it's really key that you start with uh, all the possible design space. Uh, that's why in the one example for the bracket, Prashant removed the holes in, uh, on that because he wanted to make sure the tool had as much possible design space to work up. And But even in that case, the model was already constricting it. There might have been additional design space to, that could have been considered, um, but you know, in that, you know, it was easier to start with that existing design at that point. So uh, now it does. Uh, so we do officially, um, you know, our tools uh, work with up to Windows 8. Um, it has been. Uh, you know, we do have it on Windows 10. We don't, but it officially hasn't. You know, our QA team has not tested it, but so far um, from our machines here that we have on our uh, application engineers, it's working with Windows 10. Uh, but our documentation doesn't officially say it supports Windows 10, but it does work with Windows 10. There hasn't been any problems with that. Another question that came up: Does it work with uh, any uh, traffic materials or any per, or any further versions that we will support it? Um, and the answer to that is no. Um, you know, it's isotropic. Only isotropic. Yeah. yeah, and currently it is only uh, isotropic materials. Actually, great question so far. And, and you know, again, I, I don't want to stop them. So if you do have a question, please, uh, you know, let us know. Chime in. Uh, if so far, we've been able to, uh, you know. I want to make sure Prashant doesn't leave before we answer all the questions. So there was a question that came up uh, in the chat window. And um, so there's a couple questions that came up. Let me just jump to that. But the best place to ask questions is in the uh, question window. I'll jump to those in the chat window. Uh, so the one thing was, is can you upgrade to 2016? The answer is yes. Uh, you, you can when it does come out. It's just you would have to remember to do it. <laughs> you won't get any notifications uh, that the new version's out. We haven't had set that up yet, but uh, you can upgrade to that uh, version. Uh, the next thing is uh, question was about 3D printing. Can also make a honeycomb structures, and can we accommodate that in Inspire? So I would have to let Prashant answer that question. Printing. Yes, you know you can try doing that. Okay. Yep. Well, let me just go through the question. Yes, you know, when you are trying to run it without any manufacturing constraints, you might get, uh, you know, end up getting the honeycomb-like structure. 
but if you are able to print it, you can still, you know, uh, try doing that using Inspire. And one of the things you notice when um, some of the examples that he showed was again uh, 3D printing. So uh, nowadays it's um, become very popular, and you know by letting it decide where the material should be, uh, if you will get the most optimal structure. And I think one of the things that was being asked for is also can you force it to give you a honeycomb structure? Um, and right now we let it decide what it's best. And, you know if it feels that you need to have uh, that type of structure, it will show that uh, at this point. But you can't, you know, right now we don't have anything forcing for hunting code structure. Yep, at this point we don't have it. But, you, you know, most, you know, usually what people want is the most optimal design. And uh, in some cases, uh, you know, you might have to do a little bit of interpretation of the results, uh, and, and you might realize that's what it's asking for, too. So, you know, great questions, uh, everybody. And, uh, Right now, I don't see any additional questions. I'll just sort of wait one more minute, just in case I know it takes a little bit to type. <laughs> and and what's the nice thing here is that uh, when you do access uh, the student version, uh, we do have uh, our uh, support form on the academic site. Now, show that too. Um, we have it manned by two people full time. And if you ask a question there, it's usually answered within 24 hours, if not sooner. Uh, so you can ask questions like this. So the other question is, is it possible to generate a uh, lattice structure? And, and, you know, inspired to answer is no. Um, our other tool, uh, OptiStructs, uh, can allow you to do uh, you know, work with lattices, um, what you would have to define lattices in hypermesh with OptiStruct and then optimize lattice structure. So just a little good background here. So back in 1995, uh, so quite a few years ago <laughs> for a lot of people, uh, they were really young back then, uh, Altair introduced OptiStruct. And that was the first real optimization software uh, that was commercially released. And uh, one of the things we found out at that time is that the structures it was making was not possible to produce, so we added all these different manufacturing constraints so people can, uh, you know, be able to manufacture. But nowadays with 3D printing, uh, people are able to, you know, print or manufacture, you know, those type of designs. And uh, but you know, lattice uh, is something uh, that is in the full version of our optimization engine, which is right now currently only available in the OptiStruct. And, and Inspire basically uses our optimization engine, um, and it's meant to be very, a little bit more simple to use interface over hypermersion OptiStruct approach, um, this way of things built in together. So there's a few of those things that aren't available yet. Um, it's not in the next version, but it's not to say it won't be in future versions, though. Excellent. Um, and so I know Prashant just was, uh, you might want to explain what you're trying to show there. Yep. Thanks, Darius. Over here, I quickly, you know, created a CAD and I just created non design space around this component. On one end, I applied my support, on the other end, I applied a force on the entire face. And I quickly ran an iteration to just retain 30% of the material, and Inspire came up with this load path. So once I hit this load path, I can just hit Analyze, and Inspire quickly analyzes this concept. So you can notice how quickly it does this. Uh, while it's doing that, there's a question about can we con constrain component with thermal loading and spark? Yes. In the latest version, we can apply temperature loads over here. So, but this is going to be on the entire 
component currently. So you can give an ambient temperature of whatever you feel appropriate. So this is with 2016, so it's not available with 2015, but with 2016 version we can do it. So this is how the analysis results look like. The part is, you know, having a very high factor of safety. So if you can, you can also take a look at different results out here. The displacement plot, the factor of safety plot, the regions in tension and compression, the regions in orange color are in tension, and the regions in green are under compression. You can also look at the von Mises stresses principal stresses. So these are all the different types of results which you can look at. And once you feel that this design looks good, you're just going to hit on fit. And Inspire starts creating surfaces on top of this design. One thing which you can notice is it's just getting us the results back in minutes. So it comes up with a green flag, and whenever you see a green flag, it means you have a result which has not been imported into the model. You just click on the green flag, and Inspire pulls the surface result, which can be exported and saved as parasolid. So if you feel that you don't want to use this, you can create polynerps on this design. So you can do this with 2016, which is the latest version yet to be released. So over here, you can just wrap surfaces on top of your existing design. You can notice how quickly it does this. So I can just get rid of this result and take this design. I can perform analysis on this design. So now I'm trying to run a baseline analysis. Yeah, so this is how you run an analysis. It's taking some time. I use the more accurate uh, in place of faster. So normally it does take some time to run it with more accurate. When we say more accurate, it's using the second order elements. And when we say faster, it uses the first order elements. Yeah, any questions, Davies? Uh, so right. Yeah. yeah. No, no, sorry. <laughs> right. No, no, there's no more questions. Um, and again, it's what we're trying to show again is the ease of use of the tool, and uh, and hopefully you can see that in here. Uh, but let me do this. Uh, I mean, that's running, but we're getting close to one o'clock, and I know, uh, even though we're, we schedule to one thirty, typically we do stop. Uh, you're a little bit after one, so I know because everybody has a pretty busy schedule. Um, students uh, typically need to <laughs> uh, have a little bit of time to get to class. So, all right. So, what I'm going to do, and again, thank you so much, Prashant. Um, and you know, this was again very uh, good presentation. Again, we're just trying to show how to use a tool, what it's capable of. There's a lot of use cases out there. Um, you saw a lot of industry use cases out there. Uh, and there's a lot more uh, that if you, you know, <laughs> if you are curious, we have a lot of those on our website too. But uh, let's let's go to show you how you can, uh, you know, get access to the tools. And I'm just right now I've changed the presenter to myself. You should be able to see my screen momentarily. And the first thing is is uh, if you go to our Altair website, uh, and let me just go back one here. So. People can. Uh, you'll be able to see a tab that's um, basically called Altair Academia, and uh, let me just open a new tab that seems to be 
might be a little bit better here. Too many tabs. So it's taking a little bit of time here, but so let me just pop up a new tab. And you know, we have many things on our university site, and the goal is to help uh, you know the students uh, do some self learning. Uh, in addition uh, to that, we also have uh, you know if you notice on the tab here, we have uh, you can get free books. We have books about uh, practical aspects of uh, FEA, uh, crash analysis, uh, optimization. Uh, there are, these PDFs are available, uh, so you can download free. You just have to sign up, and uh, they'll send you a link to uh, these PDFs for those books. Uh, in addition, um, you know, we on our learning site, and forgive me for some strange reason, things uh, on, the, on the web are, seems to be a little slow. Okay, great. Uh, so again, the, these are the books you see from the pull down that you can get access to, and one of them was con con you know, converted into Chinese, so that's available there uh, for those who uh, would like to have it in Chinese. Under our learning library is where we have uh, the tutorials uh, that you can get access to uh, you know, the different type of uh, solutions for using our tools. So you'll see that there's, uh, you know, for if you want to do uh, linear analysis, pre-processing, and the tools. Again, I'm not sure why it's a uh, the delay in hooking to the, the web, but just jump to the, uh, so what you can do in here is you can do a different searching of, of, of what's available. So right now I did a search for um, conceptual optimization using Inspired. It showed me uh, all the material that's available there. Uh, we do also have archived older material. Um, if you, you know, again, some people still have the version 12.0, they can access that, but you can then download uh, these, uh, whether a video or whether it's a PDF with a tutorial that explains that and how to do that. Actually, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to jump over to Bershant's uh, laptop since mine's having a little bit of difficulty with connecting to the web here. Let's just go over to his browser. And so again, the best way to find our website is just go into Altair. And I don't want that one, but that would work. So when you come into our website, uh, you see you have the different options here, and one of them being academic program. And that gets you to the main page here, and where we have all of, uh, again, the learning library available for you. Uh, you can access that. Uh, again, when you first come in here, it's just going to be a, the pure dump of it, so it's all alphabetical. I do suggest you go in and say, you know, I'd like to, uh, you know, maybe you want to see a self-paced course. And so we have these courses on here, um, and there it looks like they're not loaded up yet. Uh, which, uh, the self-paced course, again, we just transitioned uh, over the website from a, a different setup, uh, but the self-paced course allows you to Learn hypermesh, Optistruct, Hyperview uh, by following along uh, and some videos there uh, that's available. But anyhow, you can go and pick uh, the, what you're looking for. In this case, let's let's say you want to know a little bit more about modeling, how to use maybe uh, our modeling tools. So if you want to go into meshing, uh, and then let's go back to all because those aren't videos; those are actual tutorials. So there's some tutorials available uh, that you can download and get access to that. Now, where do you go to get the uh, software? 
you just go to the software tab. Uh, there's a free student edition. Uh, and you just go through the process of downloading it. It might say something, um, you know, zero purchase on the, when you go through this process here. It's, again, it's a modeled after a store. Uh, so it's, you know, it, it, you might see something like that. But, you know, it gives you the steps here, um, how to get access, where to go to, and how to give us uh, you're the host ID of the computer you're on so we can then send you a password for it. Uh, and again, as I mentioned earlier, this is, uh, has the limitation of uh, 10,000 nodes in the current version for the FEA tools, but for Inspired, it, it doesn't have a limit. And in the next version, the, the limitation goes up to 50,000. If you do uh, would like to add, ask some questions, we have this support form, as I mentioned about before. You can go in here, you can type in uh, your question, and someone will, will help you out. Uh, Again, we have two full-time people who uh, are monitoring that, uh, and that's, you know, again, the place to go to to answer any questions that you might have. And the next thing I wanted to also mention is uh, there, you, know, you, you saw a little bit about Spark right now, and uh, one of the things uh, we noticed just last week, uh, there's a contest out there from GrabCAD and uh, it uh, is about how to optimize an airplane wing bracket. And I would definitely feel that is something that, uh, you know, that if, if you guys have time, you know, we would strongly suggest you download the student version. Um, and I'll just uh, go back to my laptop to show the link to that. But just so what, how it's uh, shown here. And uh, so uh, it's about airplane uh, bearing bracket challenge. And uh, if you just search for uh, GrabCAD, uh, you should be able to find it. But I do have the link here uh, that if you know if you go to that link, you'll be able to uh, enter into that and try it out. I know students don't, don't have a, a lot of free time on their hands, <laughs> but, uh, you know, something if you're interested in, um, you can, you know, take a look at. So th there was another question that I uh, saw on the screen, and that was, can we optimize a 2D model and inspire? And, and, and the answer is yes. I mean, there's a couple different types of solutions in there. Um, and also we have uh, tutorials about that. Uh, how to do that, but if you want to be more specific, what do you mean by a 2D model? Um, that might be helpful. I don't know if you want to add anything to addition to that, Prashant. Yeah, we can just perform. So we added this in the 2016 version, uh, wherein you can run topology on 2D structures. Currently, it is just limited to topology, and we cannot perform any topography, so which we are working on. The next release, we might add topography and free shape, but you know they are still work in progress. We can only do topology with 2D shells currently. We do know many of you are part of a formula team that have attended this session. So um, also on our website, uh, it allows you to uh, you know, go to sponsoring teams, uh, contact us there with your information, um, and we'll then reach out to you um, and then be able to send you the necessary information so you can get a free version of HyperWorks. And that includes all our tools, and that will uh, have no limits to it, so the model sizes uh, have, will have no limit to it, and you, you can be able to um, leverage it across the network so you can um, have a, enough units so you, you know, at least a couple individuals can run our tools at the same time on your 
and you know network there. And in a lot of cases, many government teams do have a lab and, and their own labs that they like to work in, and they can place it on uh, the workstations there uh, and, and utilize their software. But uh, sponsorship um, is free. All we ask is uh, that it's one used for the competitive uh, you know, challenge you're in, and then also to put a uh, sticker on the vehicle or uh, whatever the challenge is at the end. So uh, if you do have any questions about that, please you know, put in the questions tab or um, you know, if, you, if you go to our site and do the sponsorship, um, we can answer the questions to that too. I'd like to thank, thank you, uh, give a big thanks to Prashant again for uh, presenting this for us and, and allowing us to understand a little bit better what Inspire is about. Also, everybody, I appreciate your time to attend this session. I know you have busy schedules and, uh, and, and just wanted to make sure you do understand that uh, we do have a free uh, student version and sponsoring of teams. So if you're interested in those, please check it out and uh, we hope we can help you out in your future problems and challenges. Thank you everybody and uh, we do have our future sessions going on. If you probably noticed we have uh, one also going on uh, Thursday optimization using Optistruct uh, and then we have additional sessions following that uh, with MBD virtual wind tunnel and so forth. Now, wishing you all a great day. <laughs>